to Two Guys in the Game Shop. My name's Phil. I'm John. And today we're going to talk about Colts Express. Colts Express is, simply put, a train robbing game. Uh, all the players are competing to see who will be end up being the richest bandit. Um, it plays two to six players, and it was produced under the Asmodee license. So sit back and relax and enjoy our walkthrough of Colt Express. So here you see the components of Colt Express. You've got your player boards here for the six players. You've got treasure tokens. You've got the player tokens and the marshal. And you've got some scenery that you can set up to add ambiance to your game session. Here also we have the train itself along with the passenger cards and engine. We have the six player decks with a different deck for each player. Um, there's also the neutral bullet cards. We have the round cards, the instructions, and my favorite, a sorter inside the game box itself. So here you see the setup for a three-player game. Um, I'm going to be playing the Ghost, the White. I'll be playing Tuco, and our neutral will be Duck. And uh, you got the player board. You start out with two hundred and fifty dollars. You place your bullet cards here, and then you shuffle up your remaining remaining uh, character cards and put them there. Now here you have a close-up of the round one card. Um, you play through five rounds, and then that will end the game after that. You'll count up money and see who can win. But with this, you have sub-rounds, and so in this first sub-round, when you play a card, you play face-up if this icon's there. If this one here, this is a tunnel, you'll play face-down. And this final one, if you have that one, the first player will start, but then it'll reverse turn order after that. So now we'll go ahead and get started here. So in this case, I'll have Tuco, my character, he's going to grab money. Now I won't do it yet, I'll wait until everyone else plays their cards because that may affect what ends up happening. So now we have Doc, and Doc is going to shoot. So his card will go down here. And then my character, the ghost, gets to act. Now the ghost has an interesting ability where he can choose his first card to be face down so people can't tell what he's going to do. So I'm going to play mine face down so that way they can't tell what I'm going to do. So now that everyone has played a card, we'll go ahead and resolve, um, starting with first player. So in this case, Tuco is going to grab some money. So I'll just take one of these gems, there's three gems, and I'll put that on here. Um, the nice thing is I don't have to show my values, I can keep that hidden to myself. So now Doc will go and Doc is shooting. Well, Doc has one target since I'm in there with him, so I'll get shot by Doc. So on the player boards, there are of course bullets on each one. Um, they also have the same backs for all the other cards. So this bullet now will go ahead and get added to the top of my player deck. So he's resolved. And then my card resolves, so I flip it up, and it is a shoot card. So when I shoot, there's nobody in my car, but I can shoot to an adjacent car. So I can choose to shoot either the dock or Tuco. And I think I'm going to shoot Tuco. Okay, so I'll put that card also on top of my deck. And so that will conclude sub round one. So now going into sub round two, uh, play is now switched. Tuco was first player, but now the player to his left is Doc, and so he gets the chance at first player now. So Doc will be, he has decided to head up. So now it's mine, and I have to choose a card, and I am going to choose to pick up money. In this case, um, Tuco has decided to move the marshal forward. So player will resolve with Doc first, so he will move to the top. Then I get to pick up money and I'm going to choose one of these 
bags of money right here. Put that into my stash. And then Marshall will move one, currently four. Then that'll conclude the second round. So now into the third round, I start, I'm now the first player, but we are in a tunnel. So instead of playing my card face up, I get to play it face down. And I think what I'm going to do is play that. Um, Tuco will play next, and then Doc will play. And now we resolve, starting with me, I decided to climb up onto the top. Okay. And I decided to shoot, so I believe I will pay Phil back. You can't shoot me, I'm up. You're up. Okay. Well, I'm going to shoot through the bottom. Because you're your special, special ability. My special ability lets me shoot through. So we'll go ahead and give um, Doc that instead. And now Doc has chose to join us up top as well. He's already, oh, up, he's top. already up top. So he goes back down. He'll go back down. There we go. That'll include number three. So now play is going to go start with Tuco again. And in this case, I think we're going to have him head up. And because of the counterclockwise, I go next rather than Doc. And this one I have to play face up. So I'm going to choose to move laterally. And Doc will decide to do the same thing. So we'll go ahead and start with Tuco. He's going up top here. Now with mine, I can move. Normally when you are inside the train, you can only move one car to e in either direction. But when you're on top, you can move up to three cars. So I'm actually going to go running across um, to the top of the locomotive. So then it's one space since he's down here for Doc. So that will conclude this first round. So then what will happen is, if there is an icon on here, sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. In this case, this is Angry Marshall. So Angry Marshall means he's going to move one back towards the rear of the train, and then fires. Well, it looks like Doc's in there, so Doc will receive a neutral bullet card, and immediately has to go to the top up here. And then that will conclude the first round. Now play will continue going through all the rest of these cards until we get to the final train stop. At the end of this, we're going to add up how many bullets we have, or how many, um, how much money and jewels we have, and the highest total is going to end up winning the game. So there you see how to play Colt Express. I, I feel this game has really fun, entertaining, kind of thematic sort of play. Oh yeah, the way that, I mean, it is definitely a short list of which games um, are about robbing a train. Right. Or even, uh, quite honestly, Old West itself. Oh, exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And they did a nice job translating that this is 100% about robbing a train. All the choices you have to make have to do with things you would have to do in a train. But then keeping it simple enough that um, one of my favorite things about this is when I play with my children and my wife. Um, because I can teach. It says 10 plus on the box. I taught five and a six year old how to play this. Yeah, it's very simple mechanics, but there's a lot you can do with the with the various choices and with those with the tunnels that you go through. I, I find that's that's really good kind of theme for the game. You go into the tunnels, you can't see what other people are doing. <laughs> it turns dark all of a sudden. Yeah, the lights are off, so nobody knows what's happening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it makes it really entertaining. I, I feel the game plays pretty quickly, you know, even with four or five rounds that you have to go through and, and all those sub rounds. Uh, when I've played it, it's it's been a, a quick moving, entertaining game with with a lot of um, I think good player interaction.
invested in it. Oh yeah. Um, the nice thing I like it too is that you can set it for five, but it's very easily adjustable. Um, in my case, around my house, we have set bedtimes, especially during school time. Um, and it's like, okay, well, the kids want to play a game, and we only have an hour. Well, it takes a little longer to play with kids because they, that's just the way it is. We're like, okay, we'll just play through two cars and then the train in. So you can really scale it to what time limit you want once you figure out how long it takes also. And I like that fact about it. Right. Yeah, and it's also neat. You've got that little bit of animosity where you can shoot other people, and, and the they kind of give you a incentive to do that where if you manage to shoot through all six of your bullets, you get a bonus of money. Oh yeah, it'll give you a thousand dollar bonus. So yeah, can which, difference which can big. make yeah. a big difference in the end. Yeah. So, um, if you are interested in a fairly quick playing, pretty engaging game of train robbery with you know, nice little entertaining bits. You're moving those those cowboys around, and it's also nice that you get the special abilities for the cowboys. Each each one has something different. All right. Um, this is definitely a game for you. Uh, good good playing game. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.